Coming up on today's wrestling news, are WWE bringing back a classic pay-per-view? Damien Priest injury scare update. Some former WWE champions are still without new contracts. And it scares me! This WWE superstar speaks on CM Punk. I'm Adam Wilborn. I'm Michael Hamford. And this is the news. Great Balls of Fire is not the pay-per-view <laughs> uh, that WWE are planning to bring back. Instead, it is Bad Blood. We only got bad blood. Not that one. Um, this is according to PW Insider. Apparently, they're going to bring it back in October uh, to celebrate the anniversary, of course, of the first Hell in a Cell match, mm -hmm. which took place on October 5th, 1997. Bad Blood pay per view, obviously, Takeout versus Shawn Michaels. Legendary match. Um, the plan obviously includes a, a Hell in a Cell match at that pay per view. Yeah. It's going to be broadcast all across their Peacock network, et cetera, et cetera. Also, interestingly, PW Insider are also saying that uh, October 5th, 2024, falls on a Saturday. Ooh. So they could literally hold it on the anniversary. Um, you are a wrestling encyclopedia. How does uh, Bad Blood s start your juices going? Not very well. Oh. Um, <laughs> the original Bad Blood, with, with which this could pay a tribute to, one of the greatest WWE matches ever, 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 ever. Stop what you're doing after you finish this video and watch Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, an all-timer. The, uh, the WWE early 2000s comeback Less so. Redneck triathlon. Oh, not great. God, yeah. Shawn Michaels versus Triple H, one of the worst matches of all time. Shawn Michaels versus, uh, excuse me, Triple H versus Kevin Nash in a match they were so worried about that they hired Mick Foley in as a referee yes. to do the bump in because they knew it couldn't possibly deliver. Um, yeah, mixed feelings towards um, Bad Blood. I will say was this. Was the HBK Triple H match the one it was like, okay, we've established you can go again now. Let's go really long. Yeah. yeah. Like 40 minutes to them that just lie there and then do ladder and table stuff. It, yeah. They're done the year prior anyway. Um, I pay tribute to that one, if anything. You know what surprises me about this story is the uh, the initials that are coming before Bad Blood because mentions of Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker and October shows put me in mind of NXT. Um, of course, with it being October, that kind of like PL NXT PLE period is already locked down, isn't it, by their annual mm. tradition that they've borrowed from WCW, which I've forgotten the name of. It be NXT. Hello. Hello. But yeah, um, it wouldn't surprise me, I guess, uh, considering that the, um, you know, you've got the likes of Triple H and Shawn Michaels so in charge within WWE yeah. to want to pay tribute to that. Uh, I'm sure The Undertaker gets some great podcast content on it as well while he's stealing our jobs from us. Uh, he took their jobs, man. Really there. good as well. I watched a clip of him and Maven talking about the Rumble the other day. I'll tell that guy to podcasters caught with his opinions on AEW. I'm great to be the boys. Yeah, he doesn't respect our business, <laughs> which I don't like. Yeah, uh, no word on whether or not it's going to be CM Punk in that Hell in a Cell match or the way he reacted in the uh, post-clash of the Castle Press conference being suggested <laughs> yeah. uh, to immediately face Drew in a Hell in a Cell match suggests maybe not. That's true. It would at least by October be like their third match down the yeah. line, wouldn't it? Um, I wonder if by then the world title will be in that programme because yeah. it isn't for now after what happened, of course, at Clash at the Castle. <laughs> yes, guess it was so funny when I... Uh, yeah, full review uh, dropping later wherever you get your podcasts, including on the What Culture Wrestling Podcast YouTube channel. But Damien Priest um, sold so effectively during that match that there were significant concerns about his well-being mm. after the match, after getting his leg caught in the ropes. He hobbled into the immediately into the press scrum and mm. said that he was going to get checked out after the fact. Well, uh, he has done per fight for select the initial word from backstage in WWE was that Damien Priest was fine and was just effectively selling during the match. He received a lot of praise for his clash at the Castle performance and rightfully so. Yeah, um, I really I, enjoyed that match. Me too. Look forward to heaping a lot of praise on Damien Priest. And uh, yeah, for as dangerous and dodgy as it initially looked, his leg or foot or ankle or whatever might have been hurt, is said to be fine. Um, obviously with Raw being so soon after, there was thoughts that what if he has to go to Raw like Rhea Ripley and have to be the next Judgment oh. Day member to surrender a title. It's a crazy record on the go at the moment where the Judgment Day have held at least one title within WWE for the last something like 450 Jeez, consecutive yeah, days or sense. something. Because um, of Rhea Ripley's long reign, the tag belts, and so on. So that gets to continue. Um, possibly getting the start now to Priest versus Gunther for SummerSlam, unless Money in the Bank changes that. But yes, we will at least get there, because Damien Priest apparently is fine. That's good. That seems to be the direction they are heading in, yeah, with uh, with the Gunther match. Uh, credit as well to Drew McIntyre, who did the, in the match did a very quick, you all right? Right, I'll just use this then. The boots to you, yeah, yeah. yeah quite really, really that. good. Any word in that report? Sorry to put you on the spot here. Mm. Any word on Drew McIntyre's bollocks in there? No, afraid not. No, they mm. appear to uh, still be a little bit sore. Well, like the uh, report I have, in addition to yes, the please. main event stuff that happened uh, at Clash at the Castle, is uh, WWE is being put forward for best cinematography for that shot. 
of punk sliding in, you going, I recognise those trainers. Yeah. I thought it was shot brilliantly. I think there's going to be a fight on our reveal. Oh, yeah, I think there is. I've seen some <laughs> tweets about this. Like, I think it's one of those things where if, like you and I, you're so invested in the Fed, you do just sort of lose yourself in it. Mm. Like, there is th logic holes you can poke in it, there or is. strings you can pull, and then... But it's one of those, isn't it, where... Uh, you can arguably do that with most wrestling angles because it's wrestling. Indeed. indeed. Uh, and I think sometimes you just have to enjoy the fact of like, so he had to count on the fact that Drew's going to be facing the opposite way and he got the okay from, I didn't really care because that shot followed by I had that quite popped the, my tits off. Quite the giggle as I was watching it as well when I kind of realised that the fix was in. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to going deeper on that. Yeah, this is not just an excuse for a cheap plug, but check out our PLE review of that later on. And our Raw preview, because we'll be talking about all the fallout Indeed. heading into Raw tonight, and presumably the arrival of Uncle Howdy. Indeed. Seems more to be getting suggested. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a couple of former WWE champions, Michael Hanfler, who are still without contracts. Every week. Every, every, every single week. week. Um, we have talked a lot about Chad Gable, who... We assume has signed a new contract. He, in the various interview junket stuff from Clash of the Castle weekend, confirmed to various sources that he had indeed re signed. He's mm. crediting Triple H with that one. Because his contract um, expired like last month, they were saying. Yeah, that, as he was getting put on the poster for the Sami Zayn yeah. match. Um, and then obviously he lost that, which is like created a bit of a, a narrative that WWE gets a signature and then jobs them out because Drew McIntyre got his sword and he still can't get his belt. So yes. that's, uh, there's a number of that going around, which is maybe why. These two are kind of uh, holding back. Maybe they want some promises from the booking rather than just for the money. Who knows? Yes, reports from PW Insider Elite saying that, uh, at least as of a couple of days ago, Becky Lynch still had not signed with WWE. Yeah. Technically a free agent, but there is still belief she will re-sign. Uh, just to reiterate what we said about this story before, I don't think it's, it's a case of... I mean, it might be a case of arguing money, but I don't think it's a case of her potentially going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I think it may just be like, I will, I will come back, it's me you know, you can trust me, handshake deal or whatever it is, or yeah. verbal agreement, not worth the paper it's written on. I think she just wants a bit of time away. She was going to have it anyway after WrestleMania and had to obviously step up with Rhea Ripley's injury. Yeah. They're not going to use her for a while. They've got lots of other things to do. Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill have just been freed up to potentially work single stuff as well mm -hmm. going forward. Um, but... Uh, not time off, we should specify, as parents, absolutely not time off. Her work just got a little bit harder by going home. Yeah. One of these days she'll be buzzing to get back to falling on her back for a living. That went Tom Brady was having to retire, actually, that's too hard. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but also, not only Becky Lynch, but Natalia is also yet to sign a new contract. Negotiations, mm. though, ongoing with her as well. I find both of these as strange as every single one that comes up at the moment. The Natalia one, uh, I don't know if people are making the assumption, like Tyson Kidd is so brothered in as an agent at this point, Natalia's, uh, what, like sort of 15 years deep plus with the company, all the obvious signs point to her re-signing. Um, and then The come, most matches in WWE history, is Something it? like that. But I, uh, I'm i not as convinced on that. I like, I, I'm on a wait and see with Natalia, less so with Becky Lynch, but it continues to kind of um, intrigue me, I suppose, in this new era of late signings and talent that may jump and may not jump and whatever. We've got it with Ricochet coming up. That wrestlers can be so seemingly involved and embedded in one product and yet just weeks away from working mm. somewhere else. Yeah. Becky Lynch just last week did the, um, the Pablo Escobar meme about not working raw, must be Monday. And that, of course, would lead everybody to assume not only is she re-signed, but she's already thinking about how she's going to fold herself back yes. in. And then we get stories like this from reputable sources uh -huh. where we wouldn't try and recklessly aggregate that Becky Lynch hasn't re-signed just to feed WWE's narrative. It feels like you can believe the, the sources that are reporting this. It's fascinating, and I can only assume, like, Seth Rollins has re-signed, so Becky Lynch, like Natalia, has like, yeah. you know, it's kind of almost the family business for them at this point, and yet, there's money out there, there's opportunities mm -hmm. out there, there's all sorts, like, Natalia, I think, if you look at um, AEW's women's division at present, would probably, like, be screaming out for oh, yeah. a veteran presence like Natalia to come in, maybe not to get a massive I've been banging the drum for her to go to do TNA stuff as well, because I think yeah. it's so beneficial there, even if she just had a few feuds. Uh, with I think some she of the will. Talent they've got, and I think that's what the direction they're possibly going in with her. Tatum Paxley, of course, working against all odds as we predicted as uh, Jordan Grace's mystery opponent. Be interesting to see exactly how much that um, NXT TNA relationship extends to the Battle Royal on this Tuesday as well. We'll be doing a preview of that. Oh, I forgot that. Was Twenty-five this wrestlers. I think, is it? think you're so right. It feels like it's opening the door, doesn't it? If you um, say his name, I mean, he appears. I think um, what I believe in Jeff Hardy, who also, of course, returned it. 
Can't start Check it out, man. I'm a spooky ghost. Gonna make it to the developmental profession. Um, I'm, I'm drawing another belt. What do you think? <laughs> it's terrible, Jack. Shall we talk about somebody else that has a vested interest in NXT? Go on. That's CM Punk. Yes. He never comes up anymore, does he? Um, yeah, he's uh, he's already featured in two stories hey. today. Uh, but here he is in the third because uh, we had uh, a quote from um, a WWE superstar currently on the roster that apparently is, quote, scared by CM Punk. Uh, I'm talking, of course, of uh, the uh, former WWE Women's Tag Team Champion and friend of Piper Niven. Chelsea Green! Who was uh, speaking to Gorilla Position, they're the ones with the sticker saying the number one wrestling podcast, um, of uh, Clash at the Castle weekend. Uh, she said, uh, kind of scary. He scares me. He scares me in and out of the ring. I'm just scared. Uh, in reference to going into a bit more detail she said no sorry oh my god are we just talking no 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 look at CM Punk and look at my husband who's of course Matt Cardona do you know what I mean I have a type and it's uber tanned it's the tanorexic type and that's my man <laughs> so in contrast obviously CM Punk and uh, Zack Ryder or excuse me Matt Cardona quite a long way apart I guess mm. uh, it's, uh, it's nice to think of um, CM Punk, the guy who has spoken at length about how the culture has changed in WWE. He was in the uh, Clash press conference saying he felt like he was part of that yeah. cultural shift all the way back with the pipe bam, uh, and yet having enough of an edge as he walks around to tell how there, Chelsea Green and others be like, you right, Punk, you right, yeah. Phil? Yeah, all good, all good, all yeah, good. Yeah, it must be, uh, not necessarily walking on eggshells, but it must be surreal, because like, some younger talent he's obviously paid, taken interest in and yeah. he wants to help them. He did the same in AEW, to be fair. Per Drew's stories, a lot of that was true. Yeah. He was saying about there how he was made to feel small and all the rest of it by him when they were last working together. He uh, obviously has friends there mm -hmm. and people he's, he's either got relationships with or, or repaired relationships with, so you yeah. can imagine they've got a bit of crack. But then, like, would you feel confident enough if you'd never really spoken to him to be like, taking the piss out of him right out of nowhere. Did Triple H feel confident when he sat down with a box of cakes at a press conference on Saturday that he wasn't going to say something that like, wasn't going to blow the whole thing yeah. up? It was Griffin. It was absolutely Griffin. What's he going to... I was going to say next. I was just glad he actually bought something from that Celtic shop because when that photo went viral of him in Glasgow, that was like, well, everybody knew it, but like back in, back in the old days, like you'd have had to hide out on a bus or be, you know, mm. be keeping kayfabe or whatever. So seeing him in there, at least we got the payoff of what he actually bought from the Celtic shop. Or you just Chris Jericho and you take three photos in the same location and pretend that that's <laughs> yeah. a, an exploration of Newcastle. Or that continued uh, picture of him stood at the airport that people still believe. I guess oh, the punk one, yeah. Just yeah. insane punk stood at the airport so in, in his haircut from 2014. So uh, it's definitely him. Definitely doing that. <laughs> uh, right, let us know your thoughts on everything we discussed. Uh, no more Twitter questions. We're going to do them on a separate, uh, more of a QA and a podcast mm. going forward. So keep an eye out for that one. Do keep sending to us at WhatCultureWWE. Uh, but let us know your thoughts on everything in the comments section below. Like, share, subscribe, and join us with the afternoons a little bit later on today as well. But for now, why not check out this video right here? We'll see you soon.